Welcome back to Optical Armoury. Right, today we're going to be taking a look at a product that I have previously done a review on. Now, it's not exactly the same product. Well, it is in a way, but it's got a couple of differences. So, I mean, Night Sight, of, um, as you know, I've been pro staff for Night Sight, um, and they're quite happy with the bits that I do for them. So I did have the Viper off of them for quite a few months. In fact, just maybe about seven or eight months. Um, so they were quite happy with the bits and pieces that I was putting out through that. Um, obviously I've done a review on that and obviously then the videos that come follow the review, i.e. clearing rabbits um, and whatnot on, on permissions that I go shooting on. So they've sent me the, they've taken the Viper back and I've got the Eagle Artec to do a review and actually get out in the field with. Now I've had it a couple of weeks absolutely fantastic bit kit two main differences really between this and the viper obviously the eagle does cover a lot more distance and that does help um i mean i don't use the full potential of this unit because i don't really do a lot of long range shooting especially at night well even during the day saying that 150 tops i'd say with a rim fire um but yeah this this goes out to sort of 550 yards um it would push past 550 yards, but I think they've given you that as a quota to safely ID quarry or even be able to spot it. So yeah, we'll take a little look at this. Um, like I say, I've had it for a couple of weeks. So I've been out at a couple of cracking bags. Um, I've used it on my Sub-12 air rifle, my 22 LR and my 17 HMR. Got two cracking bags out with it with the, both the rim fires. Not so much with the Sub-12 because um, I've been a little bit out of swing with the shooting of the Sub-12 because I didn't own one for a little while so um, I need to work on my on my distances again on my Sub-12 because like I say I haven't been out with one for a while so yeah we're going to take a little look at the technical side of it I'll have a little demonstration of how to mount it onto a rifle although you may have seen that before but I want to try and cover it in this video just purely because people may search specifically for this this model of night sight so I'd like to try and um, put it out there although I've already done it for the Viper I want to try and cover it for the Eagle now there is a Wolf available which is obviously the mid-range uh, sort of distance that you get through a night sight um, but night sight wanted me to do this on the Eagle and obviously you know obviously I do a lot of shooting at night so I'm more than happy to take it in and do my bit with it so yeah stay tuned we'll have a little run through the technical side of things how to mount it up and then um, There'll be a few clips of me out shooting with it and then uh, I will do more of a dedicated video of a sort of um, rabbit clearance on a couple of fields that I go to. So stay tuned guys and we'll have a little run through. Cheers. Right, so we'll have a little run through the contents of the box. Now as always, you get a very handy case. Obviously it's an expensive bit of kit so Maximum protection is always essential. Um, and there we have it. Now I've made a couple of little customizations to the inside of this because I also used the uh, laser range finder, which I don't have a case for. So this little pocket was already cut out. So I'll just make this a little bit more open for that to sit inside. But then you've got the tubes, different tubes for the different eye reliefs that you need, depending on certain scopes that you're using. Obviously, I use a lot of hawk, all the hawk scopes, um, and these tend to fit on just right for the hawk scopes. Um, then we've got the camera module where the SD card goes in, record button, power button, and obviously the, slot, the connections for the power port and the and for the actual the unit and the battery, should I say? So then we've got this, as you can see. It's slightly bigger for those that you have used the Viper or know a little bit about night sight. You will know, notice that this is an actual quite a wider lens on the front of this. This is the screen brightness control, IR control, and obviously that's where the infrared bulbs sit. I believe that there's five or six in this one. I should have done my research a bit more, but there's a lot more in this than what there are in a Viper. Like I said earlier, you get about 120 yards maximum with the Viper. So it is very capable. The Viper does suit the air rifles, but obviously if you want to go a little bit further with the rim fire or centre fire, then this is why they do the different models. 
this has about five or six bulbs in there I believe so it's a much more powerful unit um, so that all comes nicely packed in there this all, this one also comes with the larger battery pack because obviously it's going to be using a lot more power so therefore you get this battery which I've used several times now and it's still still got a great bit of charge left in it so yeah that's the insides of the case we'll have a little run through of how to how to mount it with the brackets that you get now a lot of scopes that people are using now you've either got the 30 mil diameter tube or the 25 so they just provide both of them it's no good having just the one if it's not going to sit on your scope properly you can get the adapters to sit in there to obviously fill the space if you do have a different size scope but 95 percent of them nowadays are either a 30 or a 25 mil so yeah that's the contents of the case you've got um it's got to be well protected obviously you've got the foam that packs it out everywhere you've also got these little grommets that um, are used now i'm quite lucky on some of my permissions um, but if you clip these onto the cable they in, they stop any interference with any sort of like power power cables or if you you know a lot of fields have the the pylons running through the through the land so this will prevent any interference flickering of the camera through to the screen and when you are recording but like i say I'm, i've always been lucky i don't shoot anywhere where there are any pylons or anything that will cause any interference so i don't necessarily need to clip them on um, and also you get the sd card converter and another little thing that i thought i might just show you while i'm doing this i bought this for my iphone it's the sd card reader it's got the lightning connection it's a app, genuine apple product so i think it sent me back about 25 quid so and obviously if i put the sd card slot into the bottom here into the phone transfer straight data straight onto the phone which i think is an absolute absolute godsend in regards to what i do anyway with posting stuff online and whatnot so yeah there we have it i'll do a little set up video now i'll add a little couple of clips of a couple of um kill shots just so you can try and get a little um appreciation of how good it is over certain distances like i said i haven't pushed it out to its maximum capacity but um i'll do a little demo of it over the course of oh, this field that i'm at tonight it's maybe i will be able to push it out to about 500, 600 yards and get a rough idea of just how good the, the night sight is. So through a little process now, I've just mounted it up onto the scope. I've got a Hawk Vantage sitting on top of my HW100. I will try and do a review on this scope, this rifle at some point. Um, I picked this up at the Northern Shooting Show courtesy of the Cheshire Gun Room, who I was on their stand for the Saturday and Sunday, giving advice on Hawk and night sight products which was quite a nice experience myself and a fantastic group of lads from the Cheshire Gun Room um, and the, the owners Jonathan and his dad John absolutely top guys so yeah they pointed me in the direction of this so I will try and do a review on this but anyway back to the setup so I've already pre-mounted the, the 25mm bracket because that's obviously what tube I've got on this Vantage I've pre-mounted that then we'll get the we'll get the camera the IR module bolted on just slide it into the groove that's on top of the bracket and do that up until you can feel that the, it's not going to actually slide off when you're walking around so then that leaves the, the screen cable to be added on now we've got this tube like I said to you earlier how nicely they fit onto the hawk scopes slide that straight onto the back end there and we've got the camera module on the back we've got the battery now this is a stock mounted case that they provide with this so I won't worry too much about mounting this up onto the stock too much I'll just get that to stick on there this is quite a wide stock on the KT I noticed, so that may be why the Velcro is peeling off a little bit. So then pretty much that is it guys. I mean, I'll just move this case out of the way. 
we'll just turn that side round a little bit. So then obviously with the IR module, what you should do, we'll wrap that around the scope a couple of times, and then just over the top, into that pulp, and same with the battery, into that pulp. That will power it up, how aligned it will be. I'm not too sure, oh, too much practice. So as you can see, matter of a couple of minutes and we're all good to go. Now I mean, to adjust it to the scope, obviously you could move that around a bit, a little bit. You put the um, the focus on this as well, which is easier to focus into the reticle because obviously sometimes you've got the focus on the eyepiece, on the ocular, or if you've got an adjustable objective. But with this, obviously once you've got the scope set to your eye, it's just a matter of then focusing the camera up to the reticle so you can see. Um, but I will add a couple of things. Like I said before, I do use, uh, well, all my scopes are Hulk, um, and a lot of you know that I highly rate them. And this has got a side focus. Now, a lot of people message me suggesting that they don't get a sharp image or they can't get it focused properly. Now, I did. I have had a couple of other scopes, or I've tested it on a couple of friends' scopes that may not have had the side focus, um, and it did make it extremely hard work in terms of focusing the reticle, so you could see both the quarry and the reticle, or it was one or the other. So, you know, we we went out shooting. We had these rifles there. He didn't have a side focus scope, so in the end, we couldn't use the night sight because you couldn't focus the reticle and see the quarry, it was either one or the other, so you couldn't take a safe shot. So I do recommend that if you do pick up a night sight unit, that you do either previously have a scope with a side focus, because all it does is just focus the parallax inside the scope, which is basically focusing the front lens to the back, um, which makes it extremely easy when it comes to using these on the, on the side focus scopes. Um, so I would just try and point that out because, like I said, I've had a few people message me that may not necessarily have a side focus scope and are having issues trying to focus in both the, the reticle to the screen or vice versa. Um, so yeah, try and, try and if you've got a, you know, hall car, fantastic to use with these night sights. Um, every hall scope that I've got apart from the Sidewinder ED, they all, it all works fantastically well on all of the scopes. I've got the Vantage, the Sidewinder, I've got the, in, I've got the, oh God, what else have I got? I've got the Frontier, which I've just recently tested that on, and the only one that it doesn't work very well on is the Sidewinder ED, and that's purely because it has so many layers on the lenses. Um, it's got the ED glass running through it, and the multi coated layers on the lenses throughout the scope create a bit of an issue for the camera to, to be able to project a good image through it. I mean, you can still use it, but you just don't get that sharp quality image through the screen or it doesn't allow the camera to work at its full potential. So then there we have it, guys. Mounted up. I've done this several thousand times now, I'd say, over the last few months. Could do this with my eyes shut, but it's a matter of once you've done it once, it's a bit like learning to ride a bike. So simple to remove once all the cables and everything's undone. Now, if you do use the same rifle for a lot of your shooting, you could always leave that bracket on. And then now we have it. Everything's off, back in the case, um, and away you go. So yeah, that's how, you do, that's how it's all mounted up. I'll have a little, I'll add a little couple of clips of the footage through the back end of this. But if you do have any questions for regarding the review, or if there's anything that you would like to know, i.e. what scopes work well, what I'd recommend on that sort of uh, basis, then please do get in touch and leave a comment in the section below. Um, but if not, I hope you've enjoyed the review and I'll, uh, like I say, I'll add a couple of little shots, clips from a couple of outings and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll speak again soon. Cheers.